Good morning. Good morning. Did everybody enjoy the extra hour sleep? Yeah. <laughs> I got some bad news for you, though. It's going to get dark a little bit earlier. Today. <laughs> Season's changing. It's amazing. We're just really uh, very soon we're going to be in a brand new church here. As I'm sure you're aware, today we're observing All Saints Day. And as part of our worship, we'll be reading the uh, names of the nine family members and friends from our congregation that passed away over the course of the last year since we last observed All Saints Day. We wish to extend condolences to all those family friends that are mourning the past and continue to mourn the passing of loved ones. Just a couple of other announcements. Um, LWML mites uh, are being collected today, and if you do support LWML uh, with your change, or you have a pocket full of change, uh, there is a box in the back there. All this goes for the mission, helping the Lutheran Women's Missionary Lead. Also today is Honey Sunday, something we do annually. Uh, if you have a sweet tooth and you like honey, uh, it'll be for sale in Narthex after church this morning. All proceeds go to the ark in Norfolk. Also, Fusion Youth, next Sunday, uh, the 14th of November, from 4 to 6, you have a meeting. You're going to uh, meet in uh, the Vickers House across the street here for the church. And also, there's new Project Connect books available as well. They are on the table uh, in the narthex to your right as you leave service this morning. There's, I believe, four different topics. Take a look. I encourage you to take one home and uh, go ahead and give it a read. There's lots of good information in those Project Connect books. And finally, the other announcement would be simply this, is that uh, we got a phone call last night, late last night, that uh, our organist scheduled for this morning was not available because he is very sick. We checked around and checked around uh, trying to find someone else who's really ready to play. Another one of our organists who normally jump in, uh, she was also sick. So uh, I uh, twisted my wife's arm, Angie. <laughs> I said, honey, would you please, uh, could you play the piano for tomorrow? It's been years since she's played the organ. But she's graciously consented to, to uh, play piano and accompany it for our service this morning. And uh, that'll be a nice little change, I think. And uh, so I just want to tell her thank you. And honey, we all understand. Uh, but you're not going to miss a note, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that will go. Oh, then the other, response, the other thing is because of that also, as far as the liturgy this morning, we'll speak the responses, okay? Instead of singing the responses, but we'll sing the hymns, of course. So, let's begin with our opening. <laughs> Thank you. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed to be in God's presence, let us confess our sins to Him. Let us pray. Help me, Lord, for I am in great need. My sins are too many to count. My burdens are too heavy to carry. I call out to you for mercy. I ask for your forgiveness, full and free. As the Father who loves me and sent Jesus to die for me, forgive me of my sins. By your Holy Spirit, create in me a pure heart that I may worship you in the company of all your saints. As your word has promised, bless me as your own. As the scriptures remind us, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. You have been blessed by Jesus with the purity of heart that comes from sins forgiven. Now we see God with eyes of faith. One day we will see him face to face. This is all because of his mercy, which he has poured upon you, and all who trust in him. As your pastor, it is my privilege to announce this grace to you, and as he has commanded, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you knit together your faithful people of all times and places into one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that together with them we may come to the unspeakable joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading for all saints is from Revelation chapter 7, beginning at verse 9. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, and from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat, for the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle lesson is found in 1 John chapter 3, beginning of the first verse. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him, because we shall see Him as He is. And everyone who thus hopes in Him purifies himself as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Be to Would you please stand for the Holy Gospel? The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, 
And when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those, or blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise Christ. We now join together in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated and at this time we invite all the children of our congregation to come forward for the children's message. You guys always like that candy that you have? It's a pretty good candy, right? It's good, it's wonderful, and it's something that you would like to enjoy all the time, right? Okay. What if someone came and told you that that candy, the chocolate that you like, isn't good? Would you still eat the chocolate? Okay, interesting. What if someone came and told you that that chocolate, that candy that you like, has a, has a defect in it? It's got something wrong with it. That it's not all chocolate. They have something, they have something else put in there. Would you still eat that candy anyways? Okay. Interesting. Okay. Well, do you trust that, that that company, that candy that you like, the people who make the candy, do you trust that they provide a good candy bar? They give you a good candy bar to eat? Do you trust them? Or do you trust the person who came up and told you that there's something wrong with that candy? Interesting. Okay. Well, you know, when someone comes up and tells us something different, we have to be careful. You see, they might just be doing it just for their own benefit. 
just because they think it might be helpful, but in fact, it doesn't. In reality, what they're doing is they're trying to lead us away from this, from putting our trust in this particular company, you know, the people who make that candy. The goal being that perhaps you leave that candy behind and go after their candy. You know, that's something that we shouldn't do. But you know, as Christians, we have something that has never changed. Can you tell me who that is? Jesus, that's right. Very good. The truth of Jesus has not changed. You know, just like that, just like the people who make that candy bar, sure, they might change, but Jesus does not change. Jesus has never changed. And we can always accept his truth. Even though some people might lead us away by like, telling us there's something different. But we should always trust that Jesus has never changed. Nor has he, nor will he. You think that's good news? Oh, God. All right, well, let us bow our heads and fold our hands. God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks to be here in your house, to hear your word, to hear that Jesus has never changed, that his truth, his words, everything about Jesus has not changed, even though people try to tell us differently. God, we give you thanks for this truth never changing. God, we give you thanks that Jesus is always the same today and forever. And all these things, we give you thanks. And in your Son's holy name, we pray. Amen. Well, very good. You guys can go back to your seats now. Thank you.
Our text for today is based on 1 John chapter 3, where John is writing to these Christians in Asia Minor, which is present day Turkey, warning them and telling them to trust the truth that they have always heard, that Jesus is the same, regardless of what anyone else is trying to say. And he's reminding them to keep their hope, to not lose hope in that promise of eternal life through faith in Christ Jesus. You may be seated. I take it that everyone here likes a piece of chocolate. You know, maybe hoping to get that certain kind of chocolate when it comes out around Thanksgiving or Christmas. Or perhaps savoring that stock of chocolate that you got from all the trick or treating, from all the candy that was passed out in one weekend. Well, that chocolate that you like, just think about it. You know what comes to mind when you think of chocolate. That one particular chocolate brand. It is so sweet, and nothing else compares to it. But what if someone comes and told you, that that particular chocolate brand is lying to you. That in fact, they don't use 100% pure chocolate in their products. In fact, they use artificial sweeteners. Would you ever be able to trust that brand ever again? Or just stick with it because you like it anyway? Yes. Spreading lies, rumors, and false advertising about your candy or any other product is rather unfortunate, if not just outright rude and uncalled for. But does that mean that you forsake your trust in that particular company? Just because someone said this one thing? Or do you still trust this company to provide a quality chocolate product? For everyone to enjoy, but they have not, and that they have not gone back on their word. Yes, John is writing to Christians in Asia Minor, which is present day Turkey, but it's not about chocolate. It's rather more serious than that. The reason for his letter is to address the rise of false doctrine that has taken root in this land. You see, he, he are these people who are teaching a different truth. And he's writing against a teacher, a false teacher named Serenthus and his followers, who are stating that Jesus was in fact not, wasn't actually Christ. That he's nothing more than just a man. Nothing more, nothing less. These truths, this false doctrine, this heresy has done nothing but cause problems. Unfortunately, leading some Christians away from the truth of the gospel that has been revealed through God's holy word. But John wrote to them to warn them and to remind them how they are to live as God's children. And John writes, See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. They are to hold on to the promise that they have been given given by the Father. John's right to not change, to trust the promise that they have been given, to not lose hope in this promise. And yet, and today, we are still faced with the same problem. You and I don't always want to live as God has called us to live. This is due to our fallen, sinful human nature. For this reason, we have this terrible tendency to give in to our sinful ways. What we must understand is that, yes, our sinful ways can lead us into temptation, and worse, sin itself. At times, we seek to build ourselves up at the cost of putting others down. We're treating others as if their thoughts, their feelings just don't matter. Our sinful nature is tempted to listen to these partial truths of the world. 
where we become distracted away from the actual truth of the gospel. The truth is that Christ died and rose again so that you and I may have forgiveness and eternal life. The world wants us to happen. It thrives on our sinful nature. It sends any kind of distraction that it can give to us. These distractions may seem interesting and rather appealing at first, but they are just lies in disguise. The world tries to convince us that there is no way that Jesus could be God. He is only just a man. He walked, he ate, he drank, he got tired, he even died. And there are other false teachers, just like Serenthus, who says that Jesus was just a great teacher. That you can get into heaven by being a good person and by merits of your good deed alone. Even go so far as to say that Jesus himself was sinful. <clears throat> but the goal is to distract you and me. To ensure that we lose our grip on the truth. To lose hold on the promise of eternal life through faith in Christ Jesus. That is the purpose of these distractions. Don't fall for this. Please do not fall for this. As Christians, we only have one truth. There is no need to add to it, and there is no need to subtract from it. It's the same truth that was given to our parents, our grandparents, so on and so forth, ever since this very truth spoke to God's people in Israel 2,000 years ago. This truth has not changed. Jesus lived, died for our sins, rose again so that you and I may have forgiveness and eternal life. Don't you see? This is the point that John is making to the Christians in Asia Minor. He was reminding that they have been shown love. Not just love from some random person, but love from the Father. John proclaimed that they have been called children of God. See what kind of love the Father has given to us. That we should be called children of God. And again, saying, Beloved, we are God's children now. What a wonderful proclamation to hear from one of the disciples. To be called children of God. There is no greater love than for one to be called a child of God. That the Father calls you His own. Because of his son, because of his life, his death, his resurrection. Even the famous English hymn writer puts it like this. Isaac Watts says, Behold, the amazing gift of love the Father hath bestowed on us, the sinful sons of men, to call us sons of God. This is amazing news. For these Christians in Asia Minor, which is present day Turkey, to hear that despite their sin, despite all the lies they've heard about Jesus spreading through the land, despite all the heresy that is being spread by these people, the truth of the gospel has not changed. This is why John is writing to them, proclaiming the exact same truth that they have already heard. Jesus died for their sins, and rose again so that they may have eternal life. As the children of God, this is their promise that they cling to and hold near and dear to their hearts. This is the same promise that you and I have as well. We have a Heavenly Father that calls us His children. This is not just an incentive for the Christian that John is writing to, but for you and myself today as well. This is something that motivates us to have to a holy living where we look forward to that sweet, sweet eternal bliss of eternal life that has been promised to us through faith. Where we treat the word of God with respect, eagerly listening to everything that is said, all that's been written down and recorded for our benefit, while at the same time embracing, embracing the truth of Christ the same truth that was spoken all those years ago in Galilee. 
where we cling so tightly to the promise of eternal life through faith in Christ Jesus. Yes, yes, the world loves to throw lies in our faces, throw up distractions and get our attention at all costs. But we have something that the world does not have. We have Christ. You and I have Jesus, who spoke the truth of God, spoke it to the people of Israel, just like the prophets of old, telling that the Messiah has come and is here now. He spoke the same truth to his disciples, entrusting to them this timeless truth, to hold on to it, to cherish it, but to also take it to others as a wonderful gift. We still have this exact same truth today. We hear it through the Word of God, through, through the Scriptures, which we've been blessed to have so readily accessible to us. This truth has not changed. Nothing has been added, nothing has been taken away. It is always constant and will be constant forever. This truth is eternal. Christ died and rose again so that you and I may have forgiveness and eternal life. That is the timeless truth. This is the same promise, <clears throat> this is the same promise that has been passed down from one generation to the next. It is the same promise that those who have gone before us in the faith have believed and held and have heard as well. Today, today we celebrate All Saints Day, where we remember our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ who have been called home to be with the Lord. This is not about remembering that they are gone or remembering the troubles that they face while yet here with us. It is about remembering these fellow saints who held on to a particular truth. That truth is that Christ died for their sins and rose again so that they may have eternal life. It is the same truth that they helped to pass along to the next generation, fostering that spiritual growth that will continue to be passed on for years to go, for years to come. <clears throat> this is what All Saints Day is about. The truth that John is reminding these Christians is the same truth that you and I have. The truth of our Lord has never changed. Regardless of how many times people have tried to change the script, nothing will ever change the truth that you and I hold very near and dear to our hearts. This truth has not changed. Amen. Now may we as Christians continue to live and to grow, to hold fast to the truth that we have been promised, the truth of Christ, the truth of forgiveness and eternal life promised to us through faith in Christ Jesus. This truth will never change and is a wonderful gift for us to have. Amen.
joyful expectation of the resurrection to life eternal, we remember before the Lord our departed family and friends who have gone before us in faith. As I read each name, our bell will pull once in their remembrance. Randy Brettsteiner. Dwayne Buckingham. Delilah Fallham. Laverne Fulmer. Travis Gardner. Janet Lambrecht. Marion Peters. Al Wainscott. Julene Zeman. We bow our hands in prayer. Almighty God, we remember with thanksgiving those who loved and served you in your church on earth and now rest from their labors. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last to the joy of your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue our worship now by singing the traditional Song for All Saints Day, two verses of For All the Saints Who From Their Labor Trust.
As you have brought again from the dead our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, so equip us with everything to do his will. We look forward to the day when your angels will gather the elect from the four winds. Grant, O Lord, that on that day we may be found among the elect. Lord, remember in our prayers those hospitalized, including Danny Anderson, Lloyd Cording, Dory Parks, who was hospitalized but has now been released, also Hans Trinkwein and Alice Cohn. Bless these your servants, dear Lord, with your strength. Guide the doctors and attendants over them and grant them healing and recovery. Lord, in your mercy. We also remember Gerald Hickson as we offer a prayer of thanksgiving on his behalf for successful pacemaker surgery. Bless him, Lord, as he continues to recover. The Lord is your mercy. We also continue to pray for those who are battling various afflictions. For Miriam Krieger, Shauna Gossman, Sharon Stanachik, Pam Halsey, Sue Broadhagen, Terry Altwine, Jolene Buss, Connie Wyatt, and Gretchen Trinkline. Bless them, dear Lord, for the strength that only comes through a living and growing faith and trust in you. We thank you, Lord, that you are the great physician. Place your healing hand upon these, your servants, and grant them strength for each day. Lord, in your mercy. We also remember those who mourn the passing of loved ones. For Jean and Jolene Buss and the passing of Jolene's father, Raymond Sievers, and also for Sherry and Jerry Krieger and their family as they mourn the passing of Sherry's mother, Laureen German. Bless these families, dear Lord, with the strength that only comes from faith and trust in you, and the assurance and the promise that one day they'll be reunited with their loved ones who have gone on before. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we also give you thanks for the new Lutheran Center for Religious Liberty in Washington, D.C., and its leader, Reverend Gregory Sells, the former speaker of the Lutheran Hour. Of the Lutheran Hour. And we ask you to be with Reverend Sells and his staff as he uh, speaks on behalf of biblical truth and biblical values in a world that has often gone awry. Bless this ministry and outreach of our church. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And we offer a special prayer of thanksgiving for our Pierce High Girls Volleyball team, a wonderful, exciting season, and also uh, going to state. We ask your blessing for them, and again, we thank you for the wonderful year. And also, we ask your continued blessing for our Pierce High uh, football team that won a, an exciting uh, game Friday in beating the first seed in the state. We ask your continued blessing for them, that they may play to the best of their ability, and uh, grant, dear Lord, them every success. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And finally, we pray for all military, first responders, firefighters, police, that you may watch over them and protect them as they carry out their duties. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And finally, we pray for all those that are afflicted with flu, viruses, whatever sicknesses that are going around. Bless and protect them. Be with the doctors as they try to with care and treatment and grant all recovery and healing. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all those in need and help the body and soul and mind in the name of him who will be our final judge. These things we ask, Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus. Amen. Please rise as we join our hearts in the prayer that the Savior himself taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.
We can see it in the Bible.